You may remember a discussion not too long ago about the rivalry between the High Elves and the Dark Prince Sinesh, how the Chaos God came to ravage Ulthuan in the Dawn Ages of the world when Inurion the Defender stood tall and the Great Vortex was born. Nakari, Keeper of Secrets, has been their chosen champion for much of that time, and now he sets his sights on Avalorn and the Gaian Vale, home of the Everqueen, Avatar of Isha. Problem is, Nakari thinks quite highly of himself, and though he's caused his fair share of issues for the High Elves, Blood of Anarion has foiled him over and over and over again, to the point he's kind of become a Starscream meme. He's a Scooby-Doo villain. Can Sinesh break this vicious cycle? Can they finally make the Elves bend over? Well, perhaps the Marquis of Masochism, the new regiment of renowned Keeper of Secrets, can turn the tides for the Dark Prince. This new Ritter Demon has an incredible dueling stat line, as you'd expect, Phantasmagoria, and Enfeebling Foe as bounce spells. The Phantasmagoria is legitimately a fantastic bounce spell, an AoE net with a minus 16 morale penalty that makes it easier for the Keeper to feast on fear and regen from wavering or routing enemies. With Enfeebling Foe, you won't be seeing it lose too many duels either. Now, of course, running both it and Nakari in the same army, incredibly expensive, that's about half your funds, and honestly not recommended from a hyper-competitive standpoint, but you can't very well play Sinesh vs. Tyrion, Teclas, or Illyrial and not bring the Bane of Althuan, so even though it's risky, double keeper it shall be. Now, since Immortal Empires has been out, this matchup has actually been massively in favor of Sinesh, in my opinion, like, brutally so, especially in Dom, but to an extent in land battles as well. It's not unique to the High Elves, Sinesh has been dominating pretty much everyone, but they're gonna do what they can here to push that perceived advantage with Mirror Guard, Hellstriders, and Heart Seekers of Sinesh. But with the release of Patch 2.2, there have been some changes for the Azur as well, and with price reductions across their entire roster, we may be seeing a bit of a High Elf resurgence. And there's one important point to take away here, and that is that Avalorn is potentially really damn good versus demons. Both in lore and in Total War, they've got the Magic Touch. The Midas Touch can turn Black Hearts to gold and send the denizens of the Warp screaming back into the Abyss. Handmaidens of the Everqueen are legit amazing versus Keepers. Bonus versus large of 35, 64 MD, Magic Attacks, Magic Missile Fire. It's almost like it's their sworn duty to protect Alarial from demonic harm. Behind them are two Sisters of Avalorn, including the Everqueen's Court Guard, also really scary against greater demons, and they have 64 MD themselves, so they don't really die in melee. And Larry herself, Star of Avalorn, Earthblood, Faz Protection, Boon of Isha. Three Rangers, two War Lions of Krace in the back, and two Dragon Princes of Kalidor in the lime green drip of the Gaian Vale. They are looking quite pimpin'. So an eclectic mix here, but one that is quite thematic, actually. Avalorn is pretty much bringing all their unique stuff, except for the tree kin and tree spirits, which would be cool to see here, but probably not necessary against the Dark Prince. And if you're the High Elves in this situation, you're defending your homeland, then you want to make an impression at the start of the battle, and you might as well get aggressive with your handmains because Sinesh doesn't have a lot of efficient ways to zone them out. Now, Hellstriders could potentially catch them, or at least chase them off. That's what they're going to try to do here, but they'll take some shots as they move in, and more importantly, Sisters have really long range. 180 range gives them a lot of map coverage, which means you can kind of keep the handmaidens in that fire arc. Whenever the light cav moves up, you can ward them off with some pretty powerful volleys. Now we're going to put this into slow motion for me, move it slow motion for me, because a lot of stuff is going to happen real fast here. Really smart play to get aggro with the war lions, because they know they can charge with impunity. Hellstriders can't zone them out, because if they do, They'll get torn apart by magic arrows within that zone of control. So into the mirror guard, into the marauders, cycle charging will hurt that Sinesh infantry a bit, while the heart seekers maneuver into a flanking position from their ambush wing at the edge of the map. I think I have to agree with Italian Spartacus when he says that CA's rendition of War Lions look kind of like a cracked out tweaker version of Kitty Cats. Maybe not quite as majestic as Mufasa's could have possibly been, or should have been, but when it comes to chomping on infantry, they do make good account of themselves, and the Kari and the Marquis of Masochism are being very smart, positioned in the tree line, dodging to and fro to avoid those deadly Avalorn volleys. They cannot commit yet. It's so dangerous for them here. Miss Micro for only a few seconds, maybe, and they lose like half their HP, so they do need to wait till that box starts breaking down a little bit and the dragon princes are committed before they can start swarming in with the back through the cavalry through their fast movers and then the keepers can join but again the downside to that being it's about half your funds not being committed to a fight yet that is potentially problematic 
Thing with Sinesh though is once they commit, they can overwhelm you extremely quickly by stacking up those leadership penalties, kicking the terror into high gear, netting down your most important troops with Phantasmagoria, and then munching it to pieces with all their AP. So it's not like they don't have the tools to win here. As I said, they have been favored in this matchup for quite a long time now. Warline's done a great job cyclocharging into the front. Nicely positioned Earthblood, while the Sisters of Avalor retreat from the frontal engagements and Dragon Princes overlapping with the Rangers and running their most hated rivals into the dirt. Actually, that's a good question. Who do the High Elves hate more? Sinesh or the Dark Elves? I guess it'd have to be Chaos, right? It's the fate of their very souls in the balance. Even though Dark Elves have probably caused them more physical pain and loss over the last 4,000 years, I think that the fate of the soul is probably a bigger deal if you're an Azur. Now this is a really cool play. Phantasmagoria, Enfeebling Foe, Acquiescence, basically all the debuffs you can think of, hitting the elite Azur cavalry while the Sisters of Avalorn, the Ever Queen's Court Guard, disrupted by Lash of Slanesh so that Marauders can close the gap and begin cutting them to pieces in melee. But Phantasmagoria for the leadership penalty Probably not going to be enough to cause the Dragon Princess to rout, but their melee defense is zero. So Nakari and the Marquis of Masochism beating on them, siding them down with their massive scimitar blades. That's a good combo for sure. Elite cavalry of the High Elves might not be able to stay in the pocket for too long in that kind of situation, but they don't have any real choice. So how do you counteract that if you're Avalor? Well, you drop a Fa's Protection and a Star of Avalor, which has long been one of the best single target heals in Warhammer Fantasy, and that might just allow them to weather the storm here and keep them in the fight long enough to run away under their own power and not all just get brutally murdered while Nakari and the Marquis beat on them. But make no mistake, if you're a Keeper of Secrets, this is the kind of target you want to be fighting. This or some kind of high value duel are where a Keeper of Secrets are going to shine. When you've got two of them fighting a single unit of extremely expensive cavalry, it's an ideal situation. Now, this is interesting. Slicing shards on a pinned down group of Sisters of Avalorn. Mirror Guard also closed in from one side. They're bunched up on the edge of their formation. And it looks like the Sisters are going to be able to disengage. They took some losses there, but the Mirror Guard actually got the worst of it. They lost about 2,500 HP from that cast from Nakari. Another gorgeous slash of Sinesh to disrupt the Everqueen's Court Guards once again. Also dealing pretty decent damage as well, but the disruption is more important because when they are firing, those keepers are under a tremendous amount of duress. So anytime you can disrupt them, prevent them from shooting, it just gives Sinesh more time to close in with their heart seekers who are cutting through the Dragon Princess of Kalidor to take in a lot of HP damage themselves. And the front line has mostly been swept up by the forces of Avalorn. So the queen doing a great job with her girls in green. I guess they're uh, Team Hightower in House of the Dragon, and it looks like they're going to be able to clean up the majority of the Sineshi infantry, which will leave these Keeper Secrets a little bit isolated here. They do have some support from the cavalry and the routers who are now returning to the fold. Marquis of Masochism continuing to chase after the Dragon Princes of Kalidor, who have been healed up multiple times by... Larry the Radiant, and Acquiescence dropping down on those Handmaidens and Alarial. It looks like those Keepers are gonna need to look for some duels because right now, Nakari is getting his ass beat by the Handmaiden combo. And then they're dangerous. They are legitimately dangerous. Again, 35 bonus versus large, 64 MD. They're gonna have around 70 melee attack when their spear comes into the equation against large targets. And remember that Nakari and the Keeper Secrets don't have any armor, so the lack of AP on those handmaidens is kind of irrelevant, and they can just kind of charge in, and they're not too afraid here. They have the stats they'll be able to survive through enfeebling foes, through the acquiescence to lower their melee defense, and they're bypassing any and all physical resistance, and that's not even counting Alarial, who's also imbuing magical damage, and Nakari just got utterly demolished in this battle. He wasn't able to do much of anything here. Now the Marquis of Masochism going after the Everqueen's Court Guards to finish them off. I'll leave that with a fascination, and they will be deleted from the game, but that's going to be irrelevant as well, because the Keeper is disintegrating, and the armies of Sinesh are gone, and this is pretty much how a lot of Sinesh games are going to go one way or the other. They are all about speed, 
violence and momentum. <laughs> and if they're able to take those great engagements, they will run through you faster than a trip to Taco Bell. But that speed obviously comes at the cost of durability, and so it can go the other way. And if that coin flips to the other side, well, then their army just aren't going to last very long, and it's not going to be a very long battle. And the card did okay here. I mean, 2,000 damage value is not the worst. He did all right. It's nowhere near paying for himself, but Marquis of Masochism didn't do a whole lot. 800 value. That's pretty terrible. Now, part of that is due to the fact that it just wasn't getting many attacks in. It's kind of an issue with single entities in Warhammer 3 in general. Uh, keepers do have this problem for sure. It did land some attacks on the Dragon Princes. It did deal some damage to them. But really, I think this was more a function of the Avalorn army just being really well suited to dealing with demons, especially Double Keeper of Secrets. Again, not a build I would rely on if I was to play in a tournament against a player like Xyphos. Xyphos is obviously really good, especially when he's controlling Dem Elves. And there are obvious issues with a build where you're spending 6,000 gold on Keepers, which are arguably not a very good unit to start with anyway. Nikari is a good Lord, but the regular Keeper of Secrets, not a very good unit. And I think it's true that the Marquis of Masochism isn't really going to see much play in competitive either. It just doesn't bring enough to the table. But I do like the Phantasmagoria. I think that's a cool bounce spell. And I think you could do some cool things with it, particularly when it comes to terror bombing. But in this case, the armies of Avalorn and Larry the Everqueen proved to be too much for the Dark Prince. GG.